Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we are back working on this. The Dodge Heavy Truck, the CNT 900 or 800 or 700, came in different versions. And you could get it with a gas engine, several different diesel engines. It was available with a Perkins Diesel Cummins or a Screaming Detroit Diesel. This is from American Industrial Models, and we're going to be building it as a tow truck. And I'm 90% sure we're going to be doing it as the, the plant wrecker for the factory in either Windsor or Detroit. The particular truck that we're building actually was used at both plants at various times as the in-plant wrecker for their shipping. So, if you watched last episode, you'll have seen me attach these um, cast resin parts onto our frame. The frame is basically uh, scratch built. Now, all the gray you see here, that's a little bit of putty that I've put on the top of the parts mainly because uh, they didn't quite fully form in my nasty molds so I've added a little bit of putty to fix that so why do I have this beastie out well this has fully detailed six cylinder diesel engine now of course they're not going to tell us what sort of six cylinder diesel engine. It could be a Caterpillar, it could be a Cummins. The important thing from my perspective is, is it's an inline six diesel. And we're only gonna be looking at it from the underside. So I'm gonna take the engine from this, I'm gonna temporarily put it together, and then I'm going to make a mold of the underside of it and its transmission, and it's gonna serve as the engine and transmission for our Dodge Heavy Truck. So there's our six cylinder engine out of our Kenworth uh, K100. Like I said, I don't know if this is a cat or if it's a, a Cummins. And unfortunately, when you go to look at pictures online, you're not sure if you're looking at the exact Cummins or cat engine that this is supposed to be. So you're kind of like, well, this ridge seems to be there and it has this and it has that. I'm sure if you're a heavy truck diesel mechanic, you'll say, yep, that's definitely a cat, or yep, that's definitely a Cummins. And it's a Cummins we need, because that's what was in the in the Dodge truck, but all we're really going to be seeing is this. We're going to have an oil pan, bell housing, transmission, so I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. But you know what? For all of us who would like to know just exactly what engine Ravel has put in, K100 Aerodyne, maybe if people could let us know which it is so we'd know in the future. And if you're wondering why I'm just holding this together with white glue, the, the tape will come off. Um, oh, and by the way, this is the rear of the transmission. Um, the reason I'm just gluing this together with white glue is I only need the underside for this application. But before I put it back in the box, I think I'm probably going to make some molds of this engine just in case I need another large diesel sometime in the future. So if people can tell us what it is, it'd be appreciated. Although I know it's going to happen. Half the people are going to say, it's a Cummins! And the other half are going to say, it's a cat! I just know that's going to happen. Maybe somebody can clear that mystery up for us. But for our application, we're going to say it's a Cummins because that's all you're going to be able to see is just the underside of it because it's basically going to be a curbside. That's what we're going to be seeing. Now, through the miracle of not bothering to film it, we have our mold built up for basically the underside of our engine and our transmission. And hopefully I've got it thick enough that I have some dimensional stability. I'm hoping that when I put my resin in, it doesn't want to immediately flop open. But we shall see. Let's see if we can get this off. Oh yeah, it's coming off easy. Let's 
There we go. Yeah, it's a little bit floppy, but I think probably the amount of time that it has to um, sit before the resin sets up should be fine. And not only that, this will ensure that I can get it off of my part easily at a later date. So I think this should be fine. We'll know before the end of the video because I will end up casting this part before the end of the video. Now, as for this bad boy, what I'm going to do before I put it back um, in some Ziploc bags and put it back in my Kenworth Aerodyne kit is I'm going to split it apart, and that shouldn't be too hard seeing as this is just white glue. Watch, it'll brr, not come apart easily. Ah. I'm going to mount these onto basically some icing container lids, and I'm going to create another mold of these parts so that if at a later date I need another heavy truck engine, like the entire thing, I'll have some molds that I can use. It's not like I'm going to be needing this engine like in the next couple of weeks or so. So it's no big deal to have these parts kind of out of commission while I make some molds of them. And this gives me a part that I can use at a later date. So we've cast our part and the mold works pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I was at the very end of a batch of resin. You can see there's not a whole lot left in here. And if I give the the bottle a squeeze, you can you can hear it's all crunchy inside there. So basically, the the, the inside of the bottle has gotten coated with partially set resin, even though there was no hardener in it. So this is the first part. I cast and really I mean given that when you figure the resin obviously is no good anymore it's not like I wasted any money but you can see the porosity here and the fact that I mean like it didn't even take any of the detail on the sides and everything like that now it's kind of a reverse hog back and that it's actually bowed this way like a banana so in that respect the first cast was a learning experience and that obviously I needed to support it a little differently. But you can also see how it, it actually foamed up. So nothing lost there. So this is the part I did with brand new resin. And you can see everything over a certain amount. It just doesn't exist because, you know, I don't, don't need that part of the engine. So you can see the details were captured far better. There's like one air bubble there, and there's a couple air bubbles on the sides of the engine mounts. But I'm going to be extending a piece of styrene out to that anyway. But turned out a lot nicer. This seam is where the two parts were brought together. I can lightly sand that to make that disappear. But as you can see by looking at the top of it, normal resin, when it's setting properly, it... It doesn't foam up. It kind of, uh, you can see here's the, the meniscus where uh, surface tension was pulling it up against the sides of the mold because obviously I would rocked it back and forth and things like that. So much better casting. I suppose there's no harm in trying to use last couple drops of your resin. If it works, great. If it doesn't, well, the resin was garbage anyway. We have our engine and transmission or the bottom half of our engine and transmission and they will be going into the chassis soon and the chassis is nowhere to be seen we'll bring it in, in the next shot so there's our engine all ready to go so i've made a front cross member for the engine you can see it just kind of curving down there and i extended the engine mounts that were cast with the engine out as you can see there so it's been super glued to that front cross member and then um Basically, uh, the, the piece that I extended it out with, that's styrene, and then it's super glued to the engine. I did incorporate a slight bit of a down angle here to the engine and transmission just to make the, the drive shaft a little bit easier to make happen. Well, it's been a morning of fiddling and testing and milling in order to get everything sitting the way it should. Now, 
before everyone pounces on me and says, the engine's too far forward. I suspect this engine is just a smidge too big for this truck, which is why I've mounted it so far forward. Of course, remember, we're never going to see the fan or anything like that. All we're ever, ever going to see is just, just, so there's a big lump of mechanicalness underneath there. If we look under here, you can see that I've milled two pockets because in order to get the cab to sit down low enough on the frame that it's going to sit where we want it to. Here I am trying to hold up two or three things simultaneously and see if I can do it. I've also drilled holes in the backs of my front wheels. And as I try to hold everything in place here, I'm also chewing gum. Let's try it like, oh, not going to work. I'll probably be cutting all this out. There, alignment isn't perfect, but here we go. We need to get the wheel about that high up into the wheel well. And we need to get the cab this far down. Now, that's about as far as we can get the cab to go, mainly because we're going to run into fit issues with the cab interior. But that looks about right. This was a fairly uh, high set cab, probably because of the very large Cummins engine that was in it. So I think that's as far down as we want to go. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot left of my front cross member here after I did the milling. Here I've got the parts for our drive shaft. Of course, we've got two universal joints, one for the front, one for the back. This is still over long. It's going to have to be trimmed once I glue it in place. And then, of course, I'll have to make the smaller drive shaft between the front and rear um, set of axles. There's our main drive shaft in place. And each end of the drive shaft is made up of six individual parts. And of course, then you've got the drive shaft itself. So you're talking uh, 13 pieces of plastic to go from here to there. And I suppose if I was really going to get anal, I would actually put a little tiny uh, disc of plastic there. And there, and that would make it even more realistic because that would be the the retaining clips and things like that. But I think that's good enough for now because I still have to make I still have to even though it's a shorter drive shaft I still have to do the same thirteen pieces of plastic for back here. So another fifteen parts later, and we've got our rear connecting drive shaft in place. Probably should have thought about the angle a little bit better before I put the axles in place but it is in place and they are connected probably using losing a little bit of horsepower there so I just got off work a couple hours ago it's early in the uh, I shouldn't say mid morning I should say on Monday I've got Monday night off which is a rare night off for me so I'm gonna try to get some serious progress done here I've finished the the tie rod here and non-functional of course and it's somewhere around here here we are that is the power assist ram that goes onto the pitman arm which helps to offset the uh, the amount of effort it takes to do the steering and it's kind of mounted horizontally Hopefully you'll see once it's all together, but I'm getting the front end together. So this uh, conglomeration of chunks of plastic is going to be the start of our uh, steering box. Pitman arm is going to come out of the, the bottom area here. This is going to be shortened up considerably, and this is where the steering column is going to come out of at the top. So there we can see our steering box has been installed probably not exact but it has the general lines of the steering boxes as you find on large trucks it's got like a, a large rectangle here and then there's a a lower wider area and the actual pitman arm 
comes out right about here so you can see that the the shaft the steering shaft comes down and then the the axle of the pitman arm comes out down there and that'll be the next thing that i work on is is doing that piece so this is basically our pitman arm looking from the front and i don't know it was going to be the easiest way to do it but i'm starting with this big chunk of plastic i just dropped on the floor now that i've picked it up uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill this away using my Dremel, which is going to be really stinky and some big blocks of uh, melted styrene all over the place. But I, I think it's probably going to be the easiest way to to rough it out. All right, we're getting close. At least we've done probably about 80% of the milling. I'm going to use some coarse files to get it down closer to what I want. There's our pitman arm. Now the little bit that sticks out the back, that's actually where the, the power steering ram is going to hook on. And of course I'm just going by the photos of when I actually filmed the truck and probably should have taken some better close-ups. But based on other models I've built and things, usually the pitman arm is kind of, kind of shaped like that. A little bit more of an arc, but I ended up making it a little bit more of an S-curve. But certainly is plausible and should be workable. So waiting for other stuff to dry, I made the shock absorbers. We'll be putting those on the front axles while I'm waiting for the pitman arm to set up before I attach the other components. So that's most of the major stuff on the front end now. I'm going to, once everything is set up, put a little nubby of plastic in there obviously to represent the mounting for the shock absorber same thing for this guy right here um, so of course we've got our steering box and then we've got the pitman arm coming out and then we've got where the pitman arm and i don't know the name of it, it goes back to the steering knuckle and then of course we've got our tie rod going in behind there Got our shock absorbers in place. Now the shock absorbers are actually serving another purpose. A couple of people have uh, expressed concern that these leaf springs might not be strong enough when we get all this resin together, and, and I get that. So, since obviously they're static, they're, they're basically something that's all glued together that just looks like a shock absorber. It represents one more solid, a solid object but going between the frame and the axle. So we've actually got one, two, three points taking the weight of of the truck to the axle. So hopefully that will be enough that nothing is going to break. Because yeah, this thing is getting heavy very, very fast. So when I started uh, working on this particular episode, I thought I was going to get all of the chassis work done. And we're pushing right up against, if not, have gone right through the 20-minute barrier for this particular episode. And, I mean, we've basically got the, the front end 95% the way there. So, I still have to do all the shackle work for the rear axles. And something I haven't even mentioned yet is I need the, the brakes. I, I don't know if they're called the brake diaphragms. But if you've ever driven behind a dump truck, you've, you've seen them. And this is one off of a, uh, I believe it's a Kenworth Anteater kit. And as you can see, I've already got some latex rubber on it. I hadn't even really considered how I was going to make these things. And last night I was thinking, well, uh, let's look at one of my truck kits for something and I found this one and the nice thing is is it's all one piece so it's going to take me a few days to build up the mold for this anyway so this is a pretty good place to break this episode up and I hope people are continuing to find this interesting and thanks for watching and until next time just keep on modeling